Hi, this is Professor Larry Louie. This is an introduction to futures thinking. It's something that I, a couple of years ago, would never think I could ever even do. But I went to some training and I proved to myself that I can actually see a little bit into the future. And I want to share some of that with you in this video and more so when we get together in our workshop. This is a pretty powerful quote from William Gibson. The future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed yet. Specifically, it's not distributed in my brain yet. And I really want some of that in my brain. And that's what this foresight is about. Foresight is about not just looking out into the blue sky. And this is a very powerful quote because it's already here, which means if we look around, we can find it. There are trends or technologies or certain approaches and processes that lead to the future, that are a harbinger of the future events, new products and services that will come. And how do we open ourselves up and how do we discover those and use some systematic ways to then cull those, interpret them, and make some impact from those. And that is the essence of this futures thinking. This is a class picture. Uh, I went to a three-day course at the Institute for the Future, and I'm going to give you some of the highlights of that and then use some of the materials, which we're all trained to use the materials, uh, use the materials with you in a workshop. But it was a pretty powerful training, as I mentioned. Uh, the composition of the group, there were some people with gray hair, um, and it was, interestingly, about one-third people from government, including the Strategic Air Command, so, whoa, serious people in that room, and a third were from corporate, including big names like Google and Verizon, and a couple of smaller organizations, and then a third from education, academia, mostly business schools, but not exclusively business schools. So this area is of interest to all types of people from people who are protecting us in our nation's most secret locations in the middle of the ground somewhere, um, to people who, who are educators to try to find ways we could impact our own teaching and our own tools that we could provide to our students. And corporate, of course, if corporates can see the future, think of their products and services. And this is exactly why the corporates were there, to help develop some tools so they could better serve their customers, anticipate needs of the market into the future, and then develop products to hopefully beat out their competition. So this is the uh, collection of people. I'll go through some of the more important aspects of the training that we had over those three days. So first, some definitions of who these people are or who you can be if you were a practitioner of foresight. First, you could be a trusted advisor. You could provide input to those in decision making that would have value. Or you could be an analyst and synthesizer where you absorb and synthesize information from diverse sources at multiple scales. You create frameworks and metaphors that you can see and use to understand change. So this is the analytical, kind of the fact gatherer and somewhat the interpreter. Or you could be the translator, which is transform the material into specific dynamic organizational languages and realities. This is more of foresight, the so what, if you will, to seeing things that are perhaps important in the future. And last, you could be a community facilitator. We engage people around ideas, create momentum, and leverage internal networks in order to affect change and improvements. This is a the core of the materials. And it starts at the center with four phases or four elements of the cycle which is prepare, foresight, insight, action. By prepare, we mean prepare your mind and define what the future is that you care about so they can provide some focus into your exploration. Foresight is you turn facts about the present into plausible, provocative, and logical views of the future. Notice none of these words are predict because they're very careful to say we're not predicting things with high levels of certainty. We're seeing plausible futures. And that's an important distinction. I thought it was quite an arbitrary distinction when I first heard it, but now I understand that these are plausible and we're not gated by saying, this is what we predict will happen with a certain level of probability, right? That's, that's not what we're doing. We're looking at plausible futures that may have some probability associated or not, right? We're not, we're not passing judgment on which ones will occur. Third is insight. Insight is a new way of thinking. There's an aha moment that you would have when you start seeing the present and seeing where that might lead into the future. And it could have unforeseen circumstances that are opportunities or even threats. That's obviously why the Strategic Air Command was there, looking at unforeseen threats. And fourth is action, where we have clear, compelling way forward. 
and this is to visualize, or organize, or prioritize. And we want to then use these to develop change and brainstorm into how we could affect these change into the future. Then you see all of these items in the middle here. And these are the 22 tools that we learned over those three days in order to help shape our mind into being open to foresight and then develop some of the skills looking at current ideas and technologies to look at implications for the future. Then drive for insight on what can we do to apply that. It may not be done right now. In fact, that's why we're doing it. There may be technologies where no one has really thought of the application of the technology, for example. And then the action where we affect, so what? You know, what do you do with it? What can you make of it? What, how can you benefit your customers? How can you benefit society? So these are the nature of the, the cycle and also the nature of the 22 exercises that we undertook. There are some tangible outcomes that we always use, these words. First is signals. We would be able to articulate certain signals that may be relevant. It could be, as I said, new products or services. It could be behaviors that are observed. It could be some policy or some technology. These are things that are these signals of change that we can elicit and um, start cataloging. Next, we could say, do they have potential to scale in impact? It could be very minute, helping a very small part of humanity or a small part of the globe, but it could be scaled to be much, much bigger, or it could be expanded to new markets where there's even more potential to take advantage of that insight or that technology. The number two are drivers. They sound like mega trends or mega macro trends or future forces. These are words all around the same idea that there are underlying changes that are long-term that would change and shape the future. And they could be things like politics or economics. It could be how major actors are behaving or institutional behavior. So it could come from a number of sources, but they're, they're larger, not just a signal, but an underlying driver. The third is forecast. The forecast is an assertion or an argument about a possible future. So forecasting is having us look forward and try to draw implications of what may happen given what we're seeing. And it could be qualitative or quantitative. We're not limited to that depending on the nature of the insight. And it represents a plausible future with no specific prediction of the outcome. And finally is a scenario. Scenario is like a story into the future, given how this might play out. It might result or would result from the above. Signals lead to implications about underlying drivers, which lead to certain foresight, which ultimately lead to a scenario of how this might all play out. And that's what futures thinking is about. So are you ready to see the future? You're not going to get on this video. I'm sorry to disappoint you. What we're going to do, we're going to use some of these tools together in the workshop because me telling you about it is really not really as powerful as you doing it. All right. So in the workshop, we'll pull a couple of these out and we'll utilize those so that you have a, a kind of a glimpse into these tools, see the power and the simplicity of the tools, and hopefully incorporate that into this project for Capstone and into your own worldview, into your view of your job, your community, um, or yourself. You know, there, I find it quite illuminating to look at things and challenge your brain to see what these changes may portend for the future. All right, so I, I'm sure you'll enjoy this because for me and hopefully for you, this is some type of thinking I had not done before. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.